There's just a few materials you need for a successful statistics experience. Now, in my class, those materials are the book, which is also available at Capem Library on reserve. But in any statistics class, make sure you get the book, a calculator. Now, the calculator that I prefer is one that can have two lines. So you can see if you've made a mistake in entering the numbers. So we can see here what we've entered in and the actual result. This is very, very useful for a statistics class. In my undergraduate class, and for that matter, in my graduate class, all you really need is a calculator that can do squares and square roots. That's it. You could be a $2 calculator. If you just want a little insurance, get a slightly nicer one. You also need a number two pencil. For those of you who are not used to studying in the United States, a number two pencil is just a leaded pencil and it has a number two on it right here. For my undergraduate class, in addition, you need one of these little clickers. Many students don't realize that reading statistics books or articles are different than reading some of the other books that you might be assigned in your other courses. For example, this is the book that I use in my undergraduate statistics course. It's a very, very accessible book. But what happens when you come to a page like this? What I find what most students do is they go read, 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 table, skip it, read, 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 oh, small formula, skip it, another table, skip it, ah, oh, more formulas, skip it. Now, that is not how you read a statistics book. Every single mathematical formula must be read and understood. Every single table must be read and understood. You need to see where they get those numbers from. Can you figure out how these numbers have been calculated? That is how you read a statistics book. The next important requirement for studying statistics successfully is time. Time. Now, in my undergraduate courses, in the books that I assign, maybe I assign a, ch a chapter, 20 to 30 pages a week. For my graduate courses, likewise, a chapter a week is pretty much the average with maybe a couple supplementary articles. You know, maybe there you have, you know, 50 to 60 pages of, of reading a week. Now, that's not a lot of reading compared to what most professors assign in the other classes, compared to what I assign, for example, in my War and International Security class or my other graduate courses. It's maybe a third to a half of the amount of reading. But reading that amount of material should take you just as long, if not longer, probably longer, than the readings in your other courses. So don't be fooled by the short number of pages. It takes a long time to get through statistics material. Likewise, it takes a long time to master the material. Oftentimes, students need to go through the same equations, the same problems, several times. These are for even some of the very, very best students that I have in my courses. It's very rare where statistics comes very, very easily to a student. So don't be discouraged if you don't pick it up instantly. That's very, very difficult to do. But do expect to spend a significant amount of time in this class, as least as much, if not more, than in your other classes. And once you do, you will have statistics in your research toolbox forever. It's one of the most important tools that you can have as an informed citizen, as an educated human being on this planet and in this country. And it's one of the, as well, the most important things that you can put on your CV. So I hope this video was helpful and I hope it will inspire you to take the serious amount of time it requires to study statistics successfully.